the Review Warrior. Godzilla Minus One was directed by Takashi Yamazaki and stars Ryanosuke Kamiki, Minami Hamabe, Yuki Yamada, Minataka Aoki, Hidetaka Yoshioka, Sakura Ando and Kuranosuke Sasaki. Post-war Japan is at its lowest point when a new crisis emerges in the form of a giant monster, baptized in the horrific power of the atomic bomb. Right, quick backstory. I've not watched any of the Toho Godzilla films. I recently bought Shin Godzilla on Blu-ray from my local HMV, and I was gonna watch it before minus one, but didn't get a chance to. I have watched the American versions from the 1998 version to Godzilla vs. Kong back in 2021. Apparently the Japanese versions focus on Zilla more than the American versions. Backstory out the way, let's get to my thoughts. Godzilla Minus One was freaking epic. This film meant freaking business from the get-go. Godzilla isn't the good guy this time either, he's the problem. The effects on Godzilla in this film were spot on and made me think that he was actually real. He felt like a real danger to all the lives in Japan, especially after they've already suffered from the war. Godzilla was an incredible monster and his atomic breath. Holy shit, it was just amazing. It made the nuke in Oppenheimer look like a tiny firework. It blew me away, both figuratively and literally. The acting was sensational too. My favorite character was Koichi Shikishima, played brilliantly by Ryanosuke Kamiki. He was this disgraced kamikaze pilot who, when he got back from battle, is immediately berated by Nariko Oishi, played by Minam Hamabe. Kamiki really played the whole guilty survivor role perfectly. You really feel sorry for the guy who didn't have the guts to shoot down Godzilla when he had the chance at the start of the film. Him and Minam Hamabe were incredible in Minus One. We also have a little child actor called Sae Nagatani playing Akiko, who is Shikishima and Oishi's adopted daughter. There is a scene when she gives Shikishima a drawing of her, him and Oishi, and she just instantly starts to cry, and you really felt sorry for this little girl. As you can tell, I loved everyone in this film. The acting was top-notch from these guys. Normally in a monster movie, you wanna skip over the human characters. But in Godzilla Minus One, they add to the severity of the situation they're in while Godzilla is off-screen and in the sea. It's not like the human characters in the American versions, and you definitely don't have Matthew Broderick saying, that's a lot of fish, to someone. Although, I don't really mind the 1998 Godzilla film. It's corny, yes, but it's entertaining as hell. I might review it in the new year. I don't even have any flaws for Godzilla Minus One. It's just a perfect monster movie with some incredible effects on the big guy. Oh, I forgot to mention this film cost $15 million to make. Yeah, next to the creator, this film has some of the best visual effects for a film with such a small budget. When Godzilla roars as well, I felt like I was being pushed into my seat because of how loud and powerful it was. In the end, Godzilla Minus One was epic. It was an incredible Godzilla film with some incredible human characters. Ryanosuke Kamiki was amazing, as was Minam Hamabe and little Sae Nagatani. The effects on Godzilla were perfect, it had some damn good and scary realistic carnage and annihilation that you would expect from a wartime Godzilla film, and it's definitely gonna take pride of place in my top 10 best films of the year. Godzilla Minus One a plus. So, Godzilla Minus One. Have you seen it, what did you think about it? Or what is your favorite Godzilla film? Whatever it is, whatever you thought of it, comment below and let me know what you think. I've been the Review Warrior, and thank you for watching. End card rap guy, take it away. Thanks for watching my review, if you have any ideas for reviews comment below and let See you next time on the Review Warrior. Also, if you like what you see, leave a like and subscribe. Thank you.